prone. I'm always prone. There are times when I can be a little bit tough on people in startups because, you know, I've worked in that industry for a very long period in my career or in my kind of, um, yeah, in my career, right? I've worked mainly in startups for the most part. There have been a few stints here and there in like regular corporate jobs, but for the most part, it's been in some sort of corporate job or some sort of startup job, sorry. Um, there are a lot of charlatans that work in that industry because for the most part, you know, it attracts people who kind of think they know what they're doing. Um, there's not really any uh, barriers of entry as long as you've got an idea and you can kind of flesh it out, build a team and ship it. You can basically have a startup. So it does kind of, you know, have a tendency to attract some dubious characters. But when there are occasions where you do come across or you do hear of somebody that's just doing great work. And I think it needs to be kind of recognized, especially when they decide to sort of hang it up. And this goes out too. Monzo founder Tom Bloomfield, who via TechCrunch has announced that he's departing Monzo because he's been struggling during the pandemic and generally kind of has to once have a bit of change in pace. And the reason why I mention is because, of course, number one, I'm a big fan of Monzo. I've been using it for like, what, two years or maybe a year. I'm not too sure, but using it for a while. Um, it's, you know, a, a bank account that mostly lives on your phone. You don't have to go into a branch or anything. Um, like I said, it's a challenger bank that kind of challenges the conventional institutions out there that exist. Um, it's just an easier thing to use, manage your money really easily with all the pots. Um, the customer service is pretty on point. And just in terms of a startup, the startup industry is fairly small. And I can really say that I've only heard good things about Tom. I've only heard good things about, you know, how Monzo is run. And when every startup I've been at, maybe with the exception of one, I've always heard somebody has either left to go to Monzo or has come from Monzo and the team at the company I was at was hired, was kind of heralding whoever got hired as a big hire because they came from such place. Do you know what I mean? Like that's a really big um sign that you're doing great work when people that like, leave your company and go to other companies are like heralded as like oh yeah he he's he's come from where's he come from oh he's from monzo it's like wow and all when people leave everyone's like wow super jealous of you going over there so it does say a lot about the culture and what we'll be able to create because this isn't this isn't something that happens at all startups not all startups have that culture or have that um have that status in the scene some places you know you get told you know as you're in pubs and bars having drinks with people um you know around the silicon roundabout quote unquote here in london you get to hear things through the great of places that you should avoid with the you know with the longest stick that you can find you hear or read of really terrible reviews online about the working conditions there so it can be very hit and miss but when you find a founder or you hear of a founder who's doing great work and decides to hang it up on their own accord right recognizing the shortcomings of themselves during this period you definitely have to give them a bit of credit and use this as an example or use the opportunity to basically amplify the voice and say hey this is a good egg and he's doing good work let's give him a good send-off so this is courtesy of TechCrunch. um it says the following Monzo founder Tom Bloomfield is departing UK Challenger Bank um, entirely at the end of the month. Bloomfield held the role as CEO until May last year when he assumed a newly created title of president and resigned from Monzo board. However, having been given the time and space to consider his long term future <clears throat> at the bank he helped create six years ago with the refreshed executive team now in place he says it's time for him to hand over the baton in a brief but candid telephone interview bloomfield also revealed that as well as being unhappy about the last couple of years as ceo when the company scaled well beyond a scrappy startup the pandemic and subsequent lockdowns exasperated pressures placed on his mental well-being he said i'm very happy to talk about what's going on with me because i don't think people do enough of which is very true Someone in his position usually especially in startups right um founders are lionized and idolized to kind of dizzying the dizzying heights sometimes un undeservingly so um so it can be difficult for said person to kind of come up and say hey hands up i'm really struggling i'm having a hard time and i'm not being able to handle this and it's maybe getting a bit too big for me or it's not what i expected or i don't feel like i'm adequate enough to do the job whatever your reasons are it can be very difficult because a lot of it's ego driven a lot of it's you know showing off how you know you know how big of a company you can build there's a lot of bragging about how big you're scaling how much you're making all this sort of stuff so to be this open and honest about it is definitely a credit to him it continues he said i stopped my role probably about two years ago he says um as we grew from a scrappy startup that was iterating and building um stuff people really love into a 
really important UK bank. I'm not saying that one is better than the other. Uh, it's just that the things I enjoy in life is working with small groups of passionate people to start and grow stuff from scratch and create something customers love. And I think that's really valuable skill, but also taking on a bank that's three or four million customers, turning it over into 10 to 20 million customer bank and getting profitability and IPOing. I think those are huge, exciting challenges. Just honestly, not ones I found that I was interested in or particularly good at, which is something that you hear a lot of founders do or you hear a lot of founders go through right you heard the instagram guys a few people right it's very difficult to i guess enjoy the job i'd imagine because even for myself i know let me talk for myself as an employee when i go to startups most startups i've been at the best times have always been when you're like plucky and you're under 100 employees right and you're basically doing seven jobs and you sometimes have to stay in until like 10 p.m you come in sometimes on weekends um and it's just you're kind of all aiming for this common goal, right? Because you believe in this vision, this grand vision or plan that this app or service has to disrupt whatever market that you're in or to revolutionize this, this or whatever. Sometimes it could be short sighted. Sometimes it could be a little bit naive and gleeful. Um, but that kind of hope and that drive that you all have collectively um, is what makes the experience that much worse, that much more worthwhile. And for somebody like myself, right? coming in with maybe not much experience it's a great place to kind of go and turbocharge your cv right turbocharge your experience levels you learn probably more in the space of a month than you would do working a very specific um, niche role in a corporate company somewhere with a guaranteed salary obviously there's a risk at startups where you could start one minute working for a company and the next minute it goes under right in, in record fashion but you know with high risk comes high reward so it definitely can pay off but i can definitely understand from so imagine that but then when it suddenly then blows up and it becomes a big thing or you get more funding and the company needs to justify the funding by hiring more people moving offices uh you know doing swanky presentations and guerrilla marketing campaigns that just look like a whole bunch of waste of money it then turns into a whole other thing and then the pressures come to you know make sure that you're justifying the salary that you're achieving it just becomes weird and doesn't it's not fun anymore and i think most people can agree with that right the the pre 200 employee market startup is probably magical right it's probably hard to even bottle it up and ship it away somewhere but once you kind of blow up it's very difficult and i guess even for a founder it must be even harder right that you kind of you know made up this idea or this service or this app on the back of a beer mat somewhere you put together a bit of money that you had you risked maybe your you know your life savings you remortgage your house a couple more times and you put it all on this app and it starts up and it finally starts to pick up some steam after a whole time of just nonsense and nothingness and then suddenly and then that that suddenly becomes your calling right you found the thing that you need to do in life and then suddenly it changes because you decided to accept more money or you decided to grow it more with some good intentions right with some good ideas in mind but it does it turns into something that you wasn't really expecting it to be it can be it can, i bet it's a mindfuck i bet it's a mindfuck just kind of wrangle like what is this like and you maybe kind of blame yourself or put yourself in the position that you are in now but you know it's not really your fault because this is the only way to grow the company and allow yourself to you know have a bigger team to help out in certain things and maybe certain features and services couldn't have been launched without this team and you secure the future of other people in your company there's loads of conflicting things that must come in your head but it definitely must be super weird to kind of go through that you know from beginning to end or beginning to you know post ipo and then to kind of fall out of love with what you made it must be super hard to kind of uh, wrestle and come to grips with continues it says in early 2019 after realizing he was doing too much and not enjoying it bloomfield began talking to the monzo investor um Elin burbage is it Elin Bur burbide burbage or burdage of passion capital and monzo chair gary hoffman about changing roles and how he needed more time or need help sorry then he says covid just exasperated things a period when monzo also had to cut staff shutter his la offices and raise uh bridge funding in a highly publicized down round so this is something again you don't hear enough about right this is i guess if it's not COVID and it's just, you know, maybe the business isn't going as well. And usually there are some occasions where the, the founder can be somewhat detached and emotionally remove themselves from feeling any kind of sorrow or sympathy for the situation because, you know, you've got to run a business. But it is quite admirable to see that it was hurting him, that he had to kind of be at the masthead and at the, 
you know, top of the chair table and making some tough decisions about staff cuts and closing certain offices and, you know, the, the damages. Because I remember at the start of COVID, there was loads of rumors going around that supposedly Mondo was going to shut down. People were messaging each other on my some, some of my little startup group chats and telling people to take their money out of their Monza accounts because um, they weren't going to see the end of the year, right? There was some mad things going, so I can only imagine what it must have been like behind the scenes in the actual company itself. He continued, said, I said, I think for a lot of people in the world and you and I have spoken about this going through a pandemic, going through lockdown and isolation involved in that has an impact on someone's mental health. I don't think it's, um, I don't think I was any different. So it was really struggling. I had a really pro supportive executive team around me and a really supportive set of investors on board. And I was truly grateful that I put my hand up and said, I need help. And they were super receptive to that, which again, you know, is something that you probably won't receive a lot of sympathy from, from regular folk, because, you know, they think oh, he's got money. Why should he care? He should be all right. But Again, running those sort of companies, um, it does take a lot. Of, it does take its toll on your mental, I'd assume. But yeah, um, a lot more there in the interview to speak about. You can check out. Um, he says, I think what he said about the future. He's looking just to take some time away, um, and just look at some other projects. But again, um, credit to Tom Bloomfield, uh, founder of Monza, stepping away, you know, on top and deciding to pursue other things and handing over the reins of Monza to people that he thinks can do the job better and just in general for creating a company and an app that is probably going to you know far surpass his um, involvement in it directly and it's going to be a legacy thing that's going to be you know an example to others and also just creating a working environment that kind of makes people envious of people that have a job there that's crazy isn't it to think startup that was created six or so years ago has become a place where people are dying to work at um, so again credit to him and hopefully wish him in the best for the future